The next time you handcuff a man, Doctor, be sure you take the key out of his pocket first. Coming to you from the Cinema Lounge of the Carolina Asheville, it's Elitist Bastards. Here are the movies, featuring Ken Hankey. Hello. And Justin Souther. Hi. I'm Steve Shanafield, your producer. You guys saw some movies this week. Yeah. No, I some saw I saw some movies. Justin had the other experience. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Let's get right into it. You yeah, saw a movie. Hey, how'd no. you know? How'd you know that was what I was going to go for? I'm surprised you're not saving that for the end. We might get well, him really worked up about it. It's hard to tell. He might be over being not, worked no. up about it. Yeah, I'm kind of forgotten about it. You saw this film and you gave it half a star out of a possible five. Because he said he lo- watched the last Adam Sandler movie. Which is true. He, what he fails to mention is that he watched, he did not watch Bucky Larson, which was Adam Sandler produced. It's not, a, it's not an actual Adam Sandler movie. You could, it's not like it's interchangeable. Like You can switch the two. It's the same damn it's movie. debatable. Okay, so the premise of this film is that Adam Sandler plays an uptight dude, and he has an obnoxious sister yes. who's his twin. Adam Sandler roles where he's super rich. You mean like in real life? Yeah. Okay. But he has an annoying twin sister, which apparently isn't even possible to have an, an identical sister? no, an identical twin of opposite sexes. Yeah, that's apparently. not that's not possible at all. That'd be pretty wrong. So this movie. You saying this movie is not realistic? Inaccurate. Good yes. heavens! His annoying sister, also played by Adam Sandler in drag, comes. There's lots of fart jokes, and fat jokes, and random. Lots of Mexican jokes. Um, is there a good reason for the Mexican jokes? We see Adam Sandler has a Mexican gardener. Don't we all? Who is some? I guess he's some Mexican comedic star, which. Once you see him, it's pretty much like, oh, this guy's doing a stand-up routine. Oh, I see why he's in, if you look at his IMDb credits, he's in Untitled Rob Schneider Project. Wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. wait. He has you, found you, yet you, another wait, hanger wait, on. Is wait, 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 you, you said Untitled Rob Schneider Project? It's a TV show. Oh, thank God. I thought that uh, that maybe there had been a tiff in between Adam and Rob. And, cause I Which Rob seen... is apparently in this, but I don't remember seeing him. I might have blacked out portions of the film. Well, that's possibly true. You know, there's also a subplot involving the Adam Sandler in drag and Al Pacino, yes. correct? Which <clears throat> probably the only thing keeping this from being the worst film of the year is Al Pacino who actually is kind of amusing on occasion. It's more depressing that he's amusing in this. He can't be any more amusing than 88 Minutes. No. No, of course not. But that, that would be impossible. I mean, there's a few good Pacino jokes since he's playing himself. I mean, that seems to be the only time that they have actually like crafted a joke is when they're making jokes about Pacino, which is... Perhaps he wrote his own material. Possibly. So you don't recommend the film? Absolutely not. Stupid? What is this? No, you sh- I, I recommend Ken see it. Ken, you, you didn't see it, but you Ken's did see... not that see, dumb. <laughs> but you did see a film that you were expecting not to like, based on the director, and I'm talking oh, about... Oh, Jedger. Yeah, Jedger. J. Edgar, directed by Clint Eastwood. You're not a fan of Clint Eastwood. I am not a fan of Clint Eastwood. I, I do not understand what all the fuss is about. Uh, I find him generally a very indifferent filmmaker. The film itself is surprisingly compelling, and it surprisingly manages to pack 137 minutes with this like from 1919 to 1973 time period successfully and entertainingly but when you get right down to it the film is a really sad love story and a really sad or tragic or pathetic maybe film about a guy who invented a myth about himself and spent his life living that myth but you know, I mean, a lot of people have, have you know, they've, they've launched into the film. I mean, some of them I have, frankly, suspect homophobia because they say things like, Hoover's alleged homosexuality, which has never been proven. Well, you read these stories, you read, read just the, the bare facts. He never married. He went to lunch and dinner every day of his life with this man. 
They went on vacations with each other. They were constantly together. They shared hotel rooms. And when Hoover died, he left him his estate. Please. I don't see this working any other way. Uh, and then there are the other people, the other end of it are people who wanted it to be more sensationalistic. They really wanted the cross-dressing. And there is a scene where he puts on his mother's dress. But I don't really think it's supposed to refer to cross-dressing. I think it's supposed to refer to the fact that she's just died. And when he breaks the string of beads that he has of hers on, I think it is supposed to be him trying to break away from this domineering woman who is probably the reason that he's in the closet anyway because she's told him early on in the film when I think she has some suspicions about this friend of his who shot himself that they called Daffy and she says, you know, why they called him Daffy? And it was short for Daffodil and she says, I'd rather have a dead son than a live Daffodil. This is not the sort of thing to exactly convince you to uh, embrace your gayness. And Hoover's mother, mother in the film is played by? Judy Dench. Do you think that this is one of her better roles? No, not particularly, but then Judy Dench is always good. I mean, this is, this is Judy Dench kind of like... It's almost like she's playing Angela Lansbury in the original Manchurian Candidate. I mean, it, it's, it's, not, it, it, it's not one of the things that I think she's ever going to be really recognized for her tremendous performance. And it's, it's fine, but it's not... You know, I, I think DiCaprio is, is somewhere on the far side of fine. I think he is, is actually excellent. Uh, Army Hammer, I think, would be excellent if the makeup didn't let him down. But the makeup is just distractingly bad on him. You gave this film a four, four and a half out of five stars, is that correct? Four and a half out of five. And it, got, it lost the fifth star being whole for that damned, tinkly, decorative piano musical score and the makeup. Would you still call this a must-see film, or is this sort of a... Oh, yeah, I, I would definitely say you should see the film, especially, maybe especially if you don't generally like Clint Eastwood movies, because the fact that I really like this and I don't normally care for Eastwood movies, uh, sometimes I respect them, but I very rarely actually like them. This one I can actually see myself buying. Another film that came out this week that... Um, I think it was sort of the opposite. <laughs> it, was a, it was a film that you actually had high hopes for, Justin. Um, talking about Immortals? I am talking about Immortals. I don't know if I'd say I had high hopes for... Um, <coughs> I'd say I wanted to have high hopes. I had high hopes I would have high hopes for it. Because it looks... The trailer's just... So the, goofy. The trailers could not excite me. That was no. the, but you were hoping it was going to be sort of an over-the-top, like, like a better version of 300 or a better version well, I of... I hated 300. I think Ken and I... Not were, as much as I did. No, no, but... I did not care for 300. Speaking of homophobic, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nevertheless, this is like a completely not. This is. Well, I've said this before. It's like they they made a gayer 300. They finally just realized they needed it. Just go for it because it is very. And I don't mean that in any sort of derogatory. No, no. It's <coughs> costume design, very elegant, but then there's also. And that's the stuff that's interesting to me as a film, the way it's... There's genuine parts of this movie where it's brilliant filmmaking, and the entire look of it is very interesting and in the way it's put together. Well, the costume and, design looks like a leather bar from... A right. really high-end leather yeah, bar from what I've seen. A lot seen. of it. Um, and they even make fun of how these people are dressed points, but... It's just like, this is the first time I feel like I've watched a movie and felt too old to be watching this. In, in your print review, you actually said that you're you know, a champion for the Wachowski Brothers Speed Racer. And yeah, sort of I like, like stuff that's ridiculous and over the top. This is ridiculous and over the top, but it's so, like, overbearingly so. Like, it's not fun, I think, is the biggest part. It's just, there's points towards the end where it's just unrelenting, just like, are you saying Speed Racer was ridiculous? Yes. Oh, okay. In a good way. This is just like, like how gory and bloody and badass we can be, which is fine, but it's just, there's, there's no point to it. Like, and Give me a little bit of context for the film, because for those people who haven't heard of it. Well, it's um, m basically a telling of the myth of Theseus, but from what I understand about Theseus, there's only really maybe one 
scene, which is where he fights the Minotaur, which is actually just a guy in a barbed wire bull mask, which... I guess no, for I some. No, I saw the 1960s Italian movie and it was a real monster. Okay. I saw this. No, I, I kind of. See, the thing is, is they made this fantastic movie with these gods that come down from the, the heavens and all of this ridiculous <coughs> stuff, but they can't have a monster. And I get. It fits into the theme of the movie about. A lot of it's about how these people don't believe in the gods, and, but yet the gods won't interfere because they want people to have free will. But. I would rather have a monster. That sounds more like some sort of Baptist doctrine to me, but um, I guess it did. I mean, it, it looks really neat, but it's there's nothing to it. Like, and it's incredibly gory, which I don't have an issue with, but it's just sort of like silly after a while when we get to the end and all these people are being slaughtered in slow motion and blood spurting, spurting everywhere. And you gave it a relatively high review, but it doesn't sound like you're particularly recommending it. I want to like it more than I do, and it's, I'm giving it a high review because, or three stars, which is in the middle, I three guess. Three stars to me is not a high review. Right. you got to hit three and a half before I think it's even slightly recommended. It's three stars of interesting, and anybody who's a fan of Tarsum Singh, or Tarsum Singh, he's got a different, it's on the credits he has an extra name now. Well, I think it's and always like, been Tarsum Singh, but I think right. he's just well, kind of called himself Tarsum on the fall. Right. But now he's got three names. Wow. Yeah. He's grown another name? Astonishing. It's interesting in the way it's made, and there's genuine bits of like really brilliant filmmaking, but as a whole, as a whole movie, it's just... You and, know, may, I and, and maybe Tarsum Singh, whatever, will take the money he got from this and, make, and make another fall. Or maybe they'll make him do a sequel to this. Who knows? But no, I was like, I got out of it, and I was like, I just feel old and overwhelmed and I did not have fun watching this there's a good chunk of like sexually confused 20 year old boys that'll love this movie I'm sure so you wanted to like a film that was self-indulgent and you wanted you wanted to see a film that was going to be self-indulgent and strange and you didn't get one but it sounds like Ken did it sounds like you got a film that is in fact well, I, didn't, I could have went and watched it you direct- could have gone to watch it, but you'd had to get out of bed. And of course I'm talking about the new Pedro Almodovar film, The Skin I Live In, or Just Skin I Live In? The Skin I Live In, yes. Um, it's not going to be to everybody's taste. It's an Almodovar picture. Right away you should know it's not going to be to everybody's taste. I do not think that it will get me banned from any place for giving it a five-star review, unlike bad education, which is why I can no longer go to Hendersonville. Um, but, uh, you know... Maybe it, ban you from Fletcher. I suspect I could bear up under that, too. I don't think anybody from Fletcher is going to the fine arts. No, no problem. I well, nobody know. from Hendersonville is going to... Well, no, Not, some well people, they, yeah. they're more likely to come here, I would say. It's closer. Yeah, but we don't have this film. I know. So, I think you're safe. So, yeah, possibly so. Maybe someone um, from Woodfin... It's very hard to discuss this film without giving away the plot. And to give away the plot would do the film a major disservice. What you know going in is that Antonio Banderas, in his first Almodovar picture since 1990, uh, is a brilliant plastic surgeon slash mad scientist who has this woman imprisoned in his house on whom he is experimenting to create a synthetic skin. That is at least what you think is going on. That's not exactly what's going on. Uh, And that's what I won't tell you, because finding out how twisted and labyrinthian this plot line is, is part of the joy of watching this movie. It is, however, a friend of mine objected to it well, I'll name names in this case. It's it's the writer, director, the creator of Chucky, Don Mancini, uh, did not like it. It is the first time that he has ever really just, no, I'm not going with this one because he found its use of rape as a plot point to be offensive. I didn't point out to him that there's actually two rapes in the film if you count a date rape. It sounded, from reading your review, it sounded very much like a typical Almodovar film in that 
there's this sort of soap opera quality, a larger than life quality, um, and strange, and, and also a, uh, a refusal to judge the characters. Oh yeah, there's, there's no no judging of the characters. They are who they are, and they do what they do because they are who they are, and that's it. Uh, the biggest thing that I found strange about it or different about it uh, was the fact that it it didn't really strike me as having much emotional impact until the very final scene. And that's why I'd like to see the film again, because I wonder if it would not have more emotional impact on me knowing where it's going.